In this video, I would like to introduce you to the wide variety of hand tools that we have at your disposal here in the wood and metal shop. Some of these tools might be familiar to you, others you may have never seen before. That's okay. What I want to do is explain to you how to use the tools and what their best use is so that you don't break them by using them for the wrong thing. All right, let's get started. All right, let's start out with an easy one. Hammer, everybody knows what that is, but what do you call that? That's a mallet, that's a hammer, right? Hammer, used for driving a nail. You probably know this one already. Obviously, you can turn the hammer around to pull the nail out. Now, say you drive the nail and this is no good for pulling it out. Maybe it doesn't have quite as big a head. Well, then you might want to use something called a nail puller. Let's drive a skinnier nail. Okay, so the head of my hammer will pull this nail out no problem because it's got a nice wide head. This one, it might work, it might not. If you have a thinner nail and the hammer's not cutting it, you can't pull it out, then you can use these. These are called end cut pliers. Now they're called end cut pliers because they cut the end of things. You can also use these to pull a nail. What you do is you grab the nail. This is even good for a nail that has lost its head. You grab it right by the base and then you just roll it, and it rolls the nail right out of there. End cut pliers. If you have a really big nail to pull, you may want to use a pry bar. A couple different ways to pull a nail with this. You can use this end, right like that. You can also slip it in there and pry up. And if you can't get enough leverage that way, then put a block of wood under it. Pry bar. Also known as a flat bar. I think I have it labeled as a flat bar in the cupboard. Flat bar, pry bar, crowbar. You get the idea. Let's go back to talking about the mallet for a second. How is a mallet different from a hammer? Well, obviously it has a different head. It has a rubber head rather than a metal head. Um, we call this a rubber mallet. There are also wooden mallets, so sometimes it pays to be specific. Uh, one good use for this is to adjust a piece of wood that you're working on. If you're putting pieces together, maybe you're using the biscuit joiner or dowels and you need to kind of smack that piece of wood to get it in place, the mallet is a good thing to use. It won't leave marks on your wood. Now, also, it's good to use against another tool, such as a chisel. These are chisels that are used with a mallet. Now, some chisels have this metal back, which means you could use it with a metal, a metal hammer, but I don't recommend it. Um, I recommend that you use a wooden mallet when you use your chisel. If I was going to do a lot of chiseling, I would put this in the vise so that it didn't move around on me. Here's a chisel that does not have a metal back. This is a good example of something that you need to use a mallet on. Don't ever hit that with a metal hammer. You'll just shatter the end. Now, another important thing to mention that this is a hand chisel. This is a chisel that you use a hand with a mallet. This is different from the chisel that we would use for the lathe. This looks like a chisel, but see how much longer the handle is? This is actually a roughing gouge for the lathe. Please do not hit this with mallet and use it like a hand chisel. This is for the lathe and for the lathe only. Here we have a rasp and a combination 
file in RASP. The difference is a RASP has much rougher teeth. It'll take more material off more quickly. A file has a little bit finer teeth. Typically, you would use the RASP first and switch to the file. You can also use a file on metal. I don't recommend using a RASP on metal. It doesn't really work very well. Give you an example. You have a flat side, and then you have a curved side, depending on the kind of work that you're doing. They mostly only cut pushing forward. You can run them back and forth, but it's not doing anything when you're pulling it back. Rasp. File. Here's an assortment of pliers. Now, I did a whole video about pliers in the spring, but I'm gonna go ahead and go through these again. Some of these are from the upper shop. These two here are from the cabinet up here in the upper shop, mostly used for wood, but also sometimes metal. These are from down in the metal shop. So first we have a pair of needle nose pliers. Needle nose pliers are good for doing finer work, bending metal, things like that. Can make nice little shapes with them, they get into tight areas. These are called slip joint pliers. They're called that because of this connection, which gives you two different settings. So you can have them close together, tightened, or you can slip the joint and it has a little bit of wider, wider teeth. This is just depending on what you're using them for. So if I need them close together, maybe I need them to grab onto something versus if I'm trying to grab something a little more round, I might use them in that way. Similarly, we have what are called channel lock pliers. Channel lock pliers have a channel and you can set them to all different sizes. Now these are typically used in plumbing, but they're also very useful in metalwork if you're trying to adjust something that's round and has a particular diameter and you need it to be open a certain distance, channel lock pliers might be the way to go. Often, com often confused with channel lock pliers are these, which are called vice grips. And you can remember that because they have a vice. You tighten or loosen this based on the size of the thing you're trying to clamp onto. What I usually do is I open them up a little too wide so that I can close them. So here we are, they're a little too wide. Then I'll close them a little bit and watch what happens. They stay pit. That little lever right there releases them. You can make this as tight as you want. Sometimes, if you loosen this all the way, they will come apart or seem to come apart, like that. It's no big deal. Just slip it back in the track and tighten up the bolt on the end. And you can see as I tighten that, the jaw is closed. These are very handy when you're doing metal work and welding. If you need to hold on to something, but you don't want to hold it with your fingers, even in a glove, you can hold it with this. Lastly, we have what are called lineman's pliers. These have a combination of a flat plier end and also a wire cutter. So you can both cut things with them and pry and grab. These are also down in the welding booth. These are very good for doing metal working. Um, they're called lineman's pliers because uh, they're typically used by electricians. These, this pair even have a little gripper on the inside if you needed to grab something with them. Lineman's pliers. Here's a pair of tools that basically do the same exact thing. They have a slightly different finish. These are called aviation snips and tin snips. And as you've probably already guessed, they're used for cutting metal.
as I said, you do about the same thing. Sometimes aviation snips are called side cutters, and this pair is incredibly dull. I need to sharpen those. Look at that, didn't even cut. That is terrible. Let's look at some different kind of saws. First of all, we have a hacksaw. Hacksaw is used for cutting metal, round, flat, whatever you've got. Now we have a whole bunch of different shears and power metal saws, so you might not really have the use for this very often. But every once in a while you need to cut a nail or something like that, you use a hacksaw. If you ever have to switch the blade, it loosens here at this screw. You just undo that. And when you do undo it enough, this gets loose. You can pull it out and put a new blade in and then tighten it back up again. For cutting wood, we've got your typical handsaw. Now this cuts on the forward. So as you push forward, it cuts. When you pull back, it's not cutting. You're just getting back into place. On the other hand, we have what is called a Japanese pole saw. It has a longer handle and this cuts on the pole instead of the push. Now you notice there's two different sides to this saw. This rougher side is for ripping. That's cutting along the length of a board. The thinner side with more teeth, this is for cross cuts. And lastly, we have a coping saw. Coping saw is used for doing scroll work. We also have the power scroll saw, which I show in a different video. Some other easy ones, some wrenches. First off, this is called an adjustable wrench, uh, sometimes also called a spanner wrench. And it's called that because you can change the span of the wrench. This is called a box wrench. It has two different sides. Usually they are the same measurement. So you have to know what measurement of bolt or nut you're using. You can do trial and error, but keep in mind that some are metric and some are in inches, standard. So be careful of that. If you're trying to tighten or loosen a nut that's a standard measurement with metric, it's not gonna quite fit right. And if it's a little loose, you might round out that nut. Here we have a socket wrench. Socket wrench has two directions. You can hear it click. You can switch it with a little lever on the back. To change the socket, you push the button and it comes right off. And then you can snap it right on like that. Again, sockets come in standard and metric. So you need to know which ones are which. Two kinds of screwdrivers, right? Got a Phillips, Phillips head, which is the little cross and a flat head, sometimes called a straight slot or slotted screwdriver. You're gonna know which one you need pretty quickly. And let's talk about utility knives. These are our utility knives that we have in the shop. They're all different kinds of utility knives. Um, typically, there's a button on top that you push and slide forward for the blade to come out. If you slide it forward and nothing comes out, it means it doesn't have a blade in it. Now, important thing with using a knife is make sure that you have a fresh blade. If you do that, this is a good, nice, fresh, clean blade. Uh, if you have a blade that is not fresh, you need to change it. And these are all a little bit different. For instance, this has a little button on it. If you push that forward, it opens up the knife. And look at that. There's a spare blade inside. Not all of them are that convenient. This one doesn't want to stay closed. Oh boy. Now I've done it. There, I got it. <laughs> uh, this one change the blade you've got to take this little screw out and this is a pretty common and these screws usually this is either Phillips or straight slot whatever you've got so all you do is loosen that up so you can get that out of there 
And it's going to look very similar to the other knife when you open it up. Something that I want to point out, oh, see spare blade in there too. Something I want to point out, so here's the little slider mechanism and you notice that even comes out of there. And there's a little notch here. There's a notch in the blade, there's a little notch in this holder. And so that just fits right in there and you can even see where the black back of the blade is supposed to go. And then you would set that back inside the knife as best you can. <laughs> that slides in and then it's all sealed up and you just put that bolt back in there and tighten it up. There are some of these knives that don't have a slider button and the blade is just sticking out all the, the time. Uh, they're very dangerous so be careful of those if you come across one. What the heck is this? <laughs> this is a ratcheting PVC cutter. To use it, you pull the handles apart to open it up. You put your PVC in there. This one's really big, so it has a, a huge capacity. And then you start to squeeze. And at some point, it starts to cut into the PVC. It ratchets, so it's gonna click every time you let the handle off. And eventually, cut right through. Then you can open it up and start again. And finally, let's talk about measuring things. We have lots of different tools for making measurements, making right angles. Here's a few of them. This is a tape measure. Everybody should be familiar with that. Now this is the kind that I like because it's inches on both sides. Sometimes you'll come out with a tape measure, you'll find a tape measure that has uh, centimeters on one side and that can be fairly useless in the shop. Uh, one thing you're gonna have to know is your fractions. If you're in the shop and you're struggling with fractions, I do have a little board over on the chalkboard that is basically a simple review, but being good at carpentry means being able to read a tape measure and immediately say, oh, that's, that's five and five eighths inches right there. And then remembering how to mark that on something else. So fractions can be something that will uh, trouble you for a bit if you weren't good at them in school. This is a sliding square. You loosen this nut right here and you can slide it back and forth depending on how you need to use it. It will read at 90 degree angle. That's not quite a 90. You can see the little gap there. It'll also read a 45, two most common measurements. Anything that is different from those, you may want to use this sliding bevel. The way that this works is you loosen it up, it slides this way in case you need to shorten or lengthen it. And then if you need to reproduce a funny angle on something, you can use this to do so. And the way that you would do that is get it all lined up and then tighten that little wing nut. And then you know that, that is the same angle that you're working with. This is a fixed square, so it always just measures a 90 degree angle. These are handy if you're just cutting boards and you need to make a mark that you know is a 90 degree mark. That pretty much covers all the basic hand tools that we have here in the shop. You might find some slight variations on some of the tools that I showed you. Um, if you do and you have a question about it, please come and ask me. And if you should find a tool that you, you don't know what it is, please don't use it until you figure out what it is and what it's for. Uh, again. Come and talk to me anytime you need help. That's what I'm here for.